Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, the cautious observer of all things human, here to poke around the corners of health that we often forget. Or, in my case, keep procrastinating on. And I'm Alara Sky, the voice that pops up in your head at 2 a.m., reminding you that you might actually need to floss. Because hey, if you can stay up scrolling through social media, you can slide a little floss between those molars. Absolutely. But let's not dive right into dental guilt just yet. We do want to talk about teeth, though. Specifically, this notion that flossing isn't just about saving yourself from an awkward conversation with your dentist. There's bigger stuff at stake. Who would have guessed that those tiny minty strings can change your life expectancy? You think you're just dislodging last night's broccoli? But according to Dr. Mercola's latest analysis, flossing might reduce your risk of stroke, atrial fibrillation, and more. It's like a secret passcode to a healthier heart. Let's step back for a moment. There's a report from the World Health Organization saying oral diseases now affect about 3.5 billion people worldwide. That's almost half the planet, which means a whole lot of gum trouble out there. And apparently, a lot of people think, if I don't see anything bleeding, or if my breath isn't scaring small animals away, I'm fine. Meanwhile, they don't realize that bad bacteria in your mouth can throw a party in your bloodstream. And that party can escalate quickly. Chronic inflammation sets up camp, the body's on alert, and then it's open season on your arteries. Next thing you know, you could be among those at higher risk for stroke or heart disease. Researchers presented a study at the American Stroke Association's International Conference, revealing that flossing at least once a week lowers the risk of ischemic stroke by 22%, and it cuts the risk of heart-related strokes, a nice, if ominous phrase, by 44%. That's a huge chunk for something so simple. I mean, 44% fewer heart-related strokes just by flossing. You'd think people would be in the streets handing out floss samples like it's the new superfood. You'd imagine cameo appearances by floss in superhero movies. Coming to a gum line near you, saving hearts from plaque attack. But let's keep things grounded in reality. The other number that caught my eye is that flossing lowers the risk of atrial fibrillation by 12%. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is that condition where your heart can go into these odd rhythms, letting blood pool and clot inside the heart, which can lead to more serious complications. So, a 12% reduction is no joke. Exactly. The heart shouldn't be improvising jazz solos, we want a steady, predictable beat. Flossing seems to offer a little help in that department, and it doesn't even charge a copay. We should also mention that the study found these links were independent of other dental habits. Even if you brush like a champion and visit your dentist often, if you skip flossing, you might lose out on some major protective benefits. Let's not forget the cost angle. Floss is cheap, most folks can afford it, and it takes maybe a minute or two. If anything offers a hefty health return for that small an investment, it's pretty amazing. I see a marketing slogan forming. Floss, the eighth wonder of the world. Dr. Mercola also mentioned that frequent flossing lowers cardiovascular mortality risk. One study found that daily flossers had a 36% lower risk of dying from heart disease. That's a number that resonates with me. On top of that, they said each additional day of flossing per week knocks another 6% off your risk of dying from a cardiovascular event. It's like a punch card for your arteries. Floss more, reduce more. I'd love if my grocery rewards card worked like that. Congratulations. Five days of flossing gets you a free pass on that chocolate bar. But let's keep it real. This is about lowering systemic inflammation. It's not some flashy magic show. It's about reducing bacteria that can cause gum disease. And gum disease isn't just the annoyance that leads to bleeding gums or the dreaded deep cleaning in the dentist's chair. It's a silent saboteur. The bacteria from your gums can sneak into your bloodstream, set off inflammation, and do no good for your heart or your brain. Speaking of brains, there's that neurology study about poor dental health being associated with hippocampal atrophy, shrinkage in the part of the brain linked to memory, which basically means if you're not flossing, you might want to keep a reminder on your phone because your memory might not be up to the task later. Yes, it's all interconnected. The mouth, the heart, the brain. It's like each part of your body politely asks the mouth, hey, can you keep your bacteria to yourself? And if the mouth says, nah, chaos can ensue. It's the same principle as not letting raccoons rummage in your kitchen. Once they're inside, everything is up for grabs. That's quite an image, but weirdly accurate. If you let bad bacteria roam free, you can't be too shocked when it's feasting in places it shouldn't. We've established the mouth is a gateway. We have research telling us flossing lowers stroke risk and heart disease risk, and even helps reduce markers of systemic inflammation. That's like a trifecta of benefits in one piece of advice. Let's not forget another part of Dr. Mercola's piece, the link to overall mortality. One set of data showed that people who never flossed had a higher all-cause mortality rate than those who flossed daily. So it's not even just heart disease. It might be a broader reflection of a body under chronic stress from inflammation. Precisely. If your gums are constantly inflamed, that inflammation doesn't just stay in a neat little box labeled dental problems. The body's immune system revs up. The bloodstream is traveling around, delivering these signals everywhere. Then come the bigger issues, 
from diabetes complications to maybe even certain cancers. Which is wild because flossing is such a small daily habit, yet the data consistently shows that ignoring this can have far-reaching consequences. It's not just the smell of your breath that's at stake, it's your entire health. Indeed. And for those who want to go the extra mile, Dr. Mercola mentions oil pulling with coconut oil as a beneficial practice too. The antibacterial properties of coconut oil can help lower plaque, reduce bacterial counts, and perhaps further support gum health. Oil pulling is that ancient technique where you swish oil around your mouth for several minutes. I tried it once for about a minute, and my jaw felt like I'd been chewing gum for a week. You've got to build up stamina for that. It's like training for a marathon, but in your mouth. And yes, it doesn't replace flossing. It's more like a supportive sidekick. And let's not forget the easiest tools at our disposal, brushing, tongue scraping, and regular checkups. Though, ironically, it's flossing, often overlooked, that might be the real superstar, according to the studies. Yes, the A-lister of oral hygiene. But I can already hear someone out there asking, isn't brushing enough? My toothbrush packaging said it had floss-like bristles. That's good, right? It isn't. Nice try, though. Exactly. It might catch some debris, but it's not going to get into those tight spaces that floss is specifically designed for. And it definitely won't reduce your stroke risk the same way daily flossing does, at least not according to these studies. So folks, the moral of the story is that flossing is cheap, accessible, and could help you avoid a host of problems ranging from strokes to memory issues. It's a little piece of string holding back a tide of medical expenses. Another question is, does it matter what kind of floss? Are we talking waxed, unwaxed, water flossers? My guess is that any floss that fits between your teeth regularly is a win. Indeed. The point is to remove debris and break up the bacterial colonies forming along your gum line. Whether it's waxed or fancy, the consistent habit is what matters most. And if you hate flossing, you can still experiment with those floss picks or even a water flosser. Just don't adopt the never floss approach. That's the only losing side here. Right, because if you skip flossing, that plaque buildup is a silent troublemaker. It can turn into periodontal disease, which is not only painful, but also deeply connected to things like heart disease, cognitive decline, and more. Let's circle back to a point Dr. Mercola made about the link between gum disease and other systemic conditions. Certain bacteria in the mouth have been found in cases of Alzheimer's, diabetes, and even some cancers. It's a small leap from the gums to the bloodstream. Meanwhile, we know that if you're dealing with chronic stress or lack of sleep, your immune system's already on thin ice. Throw in inflamed gums, and you're basically telling your body, hey, can you handle one more thing? And your body might say, sure, I'll try, until it can't. Then we see these health crises erupt. So, yeah, handle the small stuff early, like flossing, so the big stuff doesn't come knocking later. To me, it's an example of how interconnected everything is. We often think the mouth is some separate ecosystem. But no, oral health is the front door to the rest of your body. Keep it secure, and trouble finds fewer ways in. Right? And as Dr. Mercola noted, gum disease often flies under the radar. Many folks don't have major symptoms until it's advanced. So, you might feel fine, but still have harmful bacteria colonizing. Flossing helps disrupt that. So if the idea of flossing bores you, maybe you can think of it as a heroic daily mission. You're basically doing battle with the forces of plaque. And every time you floss, you rescue your heart, your arteries, maybe even your brain. That's a motivational spin I appreciate. We might just rename flossing to something more dramatic like dental sabotage prevention. Time to sabotage the saboteurs. Not that this rebranding is going to appear on floss packages anytime soon, but we can dream. That's the next step. For now, let's highlight the basic steps that Dr. Mercola recommends for robust oral health. Daily brushing with a non-toxic toothpaste, flossing, preferably every day, oil pulling with coconut oil, and routine dental checkups. Absolutely. Also, a healthy diet that isn't just sugar on top of sugar helps. Bacteria love sugar. And if you're feeding them every day, you're basically letting them set up a permanent colony in your gums. True, that goes beyond flossing. Because, let's face it, if you're guzzling soda and living on pastries, floss can't fix everything. But it's definitely part of a bigger strategy to keep your body free from chronic inflammation. And for those who can't stand the idea of flossing every day, consider the incremental approach. Studies show each additional day you floss per week lowers your risk a bit more. So if you're at zero and you move to two or three days, you're still making a meaningful impact. That's the best part of the data. It's progressive. You don't have to become a perfect flosser overnight. You just have to keep improving. The difference is real. Exactly. And if you ever needed motivation, just remember, you're not just protecting your pearly whites. You're basically lowering your risk of a stroke or a heart emergency. That's major incentive. On that note, I also like the idea of setting a reminder on your phone if flossing just slips your mind. Sometimes we get busy, but a little beep or buzz could remind you, hey, do your one-minute health booster. If we have time to check our phones, we have time to floss. That's what I always say. Actually, that's what I'm saying now for the first time, but it sounds good. It's definitely going on a motivational poster. 
But let's also remember that gum disease is present in around 42% of people age 30 or over. We can't just assume we're immune. If you have teeth, you're at risk. Precisely. And if you have dentures, well, that's another conversation for another day. But for those of us with real teeth, flossing is a must. I think we've made our case. We started out talking about Dr. Mercola's findings on stroke and heart health, and we ended with a lifestyle checklist. It all comes down to one consistent message. Look after your mouth, and your body will thank you in ways you might not even realize. Indeed. Don't wait until your dentist gives you that disappointed look. Get ahead of it. The best time to start flossing is yesterday. The second best time is right now. Well said. Folks, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We hope we've given you some comedic relief while sneaking in a crucial health pointer. If at any point you were rolling your eyes, that's fine. Just make sure you pick up the floss afterward. From me, Alara Sky. And me, Ethan Foster. Stay curious, stay healthy, and never underestimate the power of that small string in your bathroom drawer. Until next time, everyone. Take care of your teeth and they'll take care of you in return. It's a mutual friendship, after all. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay well, folks. And remember, a minute of flossing might just save you a world of trouble down the line. Cheers to that and to minty fresh hearts everywhere. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.